Hi everyone, I'm excited to give this talk on new topical and systemic treatments for chronic hand eczema. Finally, an exciting times for a chronic hand eczema. And we all know that we needed these uh, treatments uh, desperately. So first my disclosures, I don't have any uh, patents, ownership or financial gain from any atopic dermatitis or chronic hand eczema a product that is going now into the clinic. So just to review, how did we get to this point of a therapeutic development in atopic dermatitis and also in psoriasis? This was possible through bench studies of pathogenesis with biomarkers that led to clinical trials with targeted agents that also had biomarkers of treatment response. And after multiple cycles, we got this amazing therapeutic development that we are experiencing now in both psoriasis, but also in atopic dermatitis. And both the successes, but also the failures, really helped us frame the pathogenic concepts and the therapeutic directions we are going. So what about chronic hand eczema? We need to remember that biopsies are a little bit tough to do in a hand eczema because it's not an area that we can um, do multiple biopsies. And we really need biomarker studies to really understand the pathogenesis of chronic hand eczema. But I think we have a solution uh, using tape strips in order to uh, quantify biomarkers for irritant and allergic contact dermatitis and um, atopic dermatitis associated with chronic hand eczema. So now we are uh, going to talk about emerging topical and systemic treatments for chronic hand eczema. And of course, we, I will start with JAK inhibitors, very busy time for JAK inhibitors for multiple skin indications, but particularly for atopic dermatitis and chronic hand eczema. And why JAK inhibitors are very well positioned to treat chronic hand eczema. The reason being that chronic hand eczema is a hodgepodge of several cytokine pathways. And this include TH1, TH2, and TH17, really depending on the etiopathogenesis of the chronic hand eczema, whether it's atopic chronic hand eczema, where, whether it's irritant contact dermatitis or allergic contact dermatitis. So irritant contact dermatitis involves TH1 and TH17 pathways. Allergic contact dermatitis depends on the allergen, but it's either TH1, TH17, or TH2 and TH22. And atopic dermatitis is TH2 and TH22. So thus, for effective therapeutic response in the majority of patients with chronic hand eczema, we really need to target more than one cytokine a pathway. And this is what we have with JAK inhibitors, such as JAK1 that targets multiple of these cytokines that are needed here to target. And we have additional cytokine targeting from the JAK2, JAK3, or TIC2 a, a targeting. So this is really important to remember. Sorry. The first study that I want to present is a phase 2A randomized vehicle control, double blind placebo controlled trial of topical delgocetinib for adults with chronic hand eczema. And delgocetinib is a pan JAK inhibitor that inhibits both JAK1, JAK2, JAK3, and TIC2. And again, it will basically handle the immune abnormalities that involve chronic hand eczema across the different phenotypes, whether it's irritant contact dermatitis, allergic contact dermatitis, or atopic hand eczema. And this study involved adults between 18 to 65. It was an eight-week treatment of delgocetinib ointment, 0.3% BID as compared to vehicle. And it looked at PGA and HEXI. And these are the data. It was not a large study. It was relatively a small study. And here we see really nice data in terms of the PGA uh, for chronic hand eczema, PGA01, and more than two-point improvement from baseline. But not so good results in HEXI. HEXI is a little bit more uh, controversial for using clinical trials. And I think um, I would advise more to use PGA and MTLSS that are in, used in multiple studies rather than HEXI that is much more cumbersome uh, and uh, harder to use. In this study also, uh, there were uh, some signal of nasopharyngitis 
and headaches, so some systemic exposure likely, but there were no AEs that uh, led to study discontinuation in the delgocitinib group, so for sure we need additional studies to understand systemic absorption. Now, another uh, study uh, was the DREAM study, phase 2B randomized, again, double-blind vehicle control study of delgocitinib a cream in adults with chronic hand eczema. Here, multiple doses went forward for a 16-week period this time. Um, and um, you see that there were a little bit differences between males and females, but overall, I think uh, the study was uh, balanced and in a broad range of uh, severity uh, here, as you can see, uh, again, uh, adults. And here you see, um, actually, and here uh, it was the hexi, you do see a nice uh, dose response uh, in the hexi. And uh, also in the IgA, you see a nice dose response uh, with the, both of the uh, uh, highest doses achieving a significant success at week 16 um, in the uh, chronic hand eczema IgA. So generally, a really nice responses um, with success as compared to vehicle. A vehicle, as you see in terms of IgA, very low responses. And uh, as you know, this drug is moving forward uh, in a patient with chronic hand eczema. Uh, what about oral uh, treatment? We know that um, uh, for some patients, they may need oral treatment. And uh, there is a drug that um, um, uh, addresses that, gusacitinib uh, from Asana. That's a, a JAK tick inhibitor. So it's also a pan JAK and tick inhibitor. Uh, due to that, it will inhibit TH1, TH2, TH22, and IL-23 uh, signaling. And this study was a 16-week study with a follow-up. And uh, we see here a nice dose response between the 80, 40, and placebo uh, with significance achieved uh, at multiple weeks uh, here in the primary endpoint. And the primary endpoint here was reduction in MTLSS, that's a composite score, with gusacitinib. And the PGA01, again, a very nice dose response. This is what we want to see in these uh, studies. And uh, pay attention to the low responses in placebo in chronic hand eczema. So these are refractory patients that probably used multiple other studies or multiple other drugs. Uh, in terms of safety, so overall, um, uh, there were asymptomatic CPK elevations, no changes in total cholesterol, uh, th though there were increases in HDL and decreases in LDL, and no significant changes in hematology lab assessments, in no opportunistic infections, thromboembolic events, mace, malignancies, or deaths. But we, we do see some GI manifestations, as you see, vomiting, diarrhea, eh, and eh, some upper respiratory eh, tract infections, as we see with other eh, JAKs. So eh, we do see those signaling. Uh, and considering its mechanism of action, I think it will be important to fully understand the risk-benefit profile of this drug in, in, in future studies. Um, the drug um, um, also is moving forward now to phase three. Uh, what about dupilumab? Dupilumab is used in practice for a, a chronic hand eczema, and also there is a study with dupilumab for chronic hand eczema. Why would it work? Because it decreases TH2. Indirectly, it has effects in decreasing TH17 and TH22, and a, a, it works on differentiation that is also involved in chronic hand eczema, so likely should work. A, again, a, there is a study ongoing that we do not have a results a, from, but it's in clinicaltrial.gov. But in real life, we are all using it. And this is a patient from my own practice, very refractory patient. And dupilumab worked really well in this patient. And many others, we also see that it works with this hydrotic eczema, a type of a chronic hand eczema as well. So this is before and after in this patient. And this is the, on the feet. So both hands and feet. 
What about other treatments? Um, Apremilas, for example, um, is being used by uh, some people um, uh, for chronic hand eczema. Um, and there is some efficacy, uh, particularly for those patients that have irritant or allergic contact dermatitis where TH1 and TH17 are involved. There was a pilot study listed in clinicaltrial.gov of 10 patients um, that were to be treated with the 30 milligram BAD dose as a single arm for six months. But uh, the study was terminated early because um, the PI left in, in, in George Washington uh, University. So um, uh, that will not go on for now. Future directions for hand eczema, we really need to incorporate non-invasive biomarkers, particularly tape strips in clinical trials to help shed light into the phenotypes of the different chronic hand eczema phenotypes. And we are actually involved in such a study that we, we hope will really uh, shed light into the pathogenesis uh, so that we'll have new treatments. So thank you so much. And I hope you'll share my excitement because we really are beginning an exciting medical and scientific path for a new treatment paradigm for our patients with chronic hand eczema that are in dire need of better treatments. Thank you.